Welcome back. Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis tabled a report on urban renewal in the lower chamber today. He said that commission members will come from the ministries associated with urban renewal in order to sustain the program. Mr. Davis said that eight members will be named shortly, but all of the staff should be selected by mid-August. Some of the personnel employed in urban renewal through June 2012 were public service staff and each of these remain in their posts. Some of the staff were recognized by the managers of the program as essential and especially talented or necessary, and those contracts have been renewed. All of the persons who had contracts have been going through a review process. Some will be offered new two-year contracts, some will not be engaged. New staff will be engaged as necessary to carry out the Commission's project. Well, government needs to borrow $7.5 million from the Inter-American Development Bank to assist the poor. That from Social Services Minister, the Honorable Melanie Griffin in Parliament today. She said a new day is dawning regarding the social safety net designed to help those in need. In this vein, government wants to introduce a conditional cash transfer program, which features a single cash grant to replace various assistance programs. All el eligible households will be granted a monthly base amount without conditions. However, add-on payments will be made to households with children, provided the health and education conditions are met on a monthly basis. <clears throat> Additionally, special one-time incentive payments could be made under certain conditions. The Inter-American Development Bank will provide a suggested table of transfers for use as a guide. The options for the delivery of transfers include electronic cards, cellular phones, or check, checks, or, or cash. Now, Minister Griffin also said that partners include the Ministries of Health and Education. The goals include addressing childhood obesity and the enrollment gaps between preschoolers and the low graduation rate. The majority of beneficiaries will be required to meet health and education conditions to receive the full benefit on a monthly basis. Currently, applications for assistance are completed by hand by social workers who also conduct a home visit to verify conditions after which the application is submitted for approval. With this new CCT, the application is completed electronically, and upon completion, the MIS determines eligibility and persons are informed immediately of the outcome. If eligible, a home visit is made to verify the information after which the person is enrolled in the program. Well, crime is a major concern and government has implemented a number of measures which it feels will assist in reducing those crime figures. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage addressing this issue in Parliament today. He said he is pleased with the combined efforts in the crime fight. Since May of this year, numerous operations have been monitored by officers across the force. Each operation given a specific name with clear objectives, led by divisional and subdivisional commanders and have been extremely effective in interdicting serious crimes, drug peddlers, and persons in possession of firearms. <coughs> the Attorney General and the team at the Attorney General's office continue to offer their full support to the Royal Bahamas Police Force, as evidenced by the number of murder accused and other serious offenders who are currently incarcerated based upon successful arguments before the courts by attorneys from the Attorney General's office. <coughs> of significance, is the fact that a number of leaders of organized crime groups and members of gangs have been incarcerated for serious crimes. Swift justice meetings are convened weekly by the Honorable Attorney General and senior leaders from the police force attend these meetings. This high level of involvement by senior police officers and senior team leaders from the office of the Attorney General is paying good dividends. On another issue, Dr. Nottage added that government is committed to extending the tenure for the police chief. We have moved, or are moving, to repeal all provisions from the Police Act that are unconstitutional.
very moving provisions which attempt to politicize the police force and or impede the impartiality of the security of tenure of the commissioner or the deputy police commissioner. From the court, 37-year-old Stephen Dye Stubbs appeared before a judge today accused of abatement to murder in relation to Clayton Daniel Smith and Kamiko Jones. The two were gunned down in Ridgeland Park last year. In court today, Stubbs was not required to enter a plea and has been remanded to prison. The matter will be fast-tracked to the Supreme Court, eliminating the need for a pretrial in the lower court. While well, electricity supply was restored around 3 today following an island-wide blackout. BEC officials say the equipment at the Albany substation malfunctioned, resulting in a massive blackout around noon. We're told that an investigation is underway and all efforts are being made to prevent a similar occurrence. Now, former city market employees apparently a step closer to getting their monies owed. Today, they demonstrated in Rawson Square to bring attention to their plight. The prime minister has also promised to meet with both sides in an effort to resolve the matter. Fern Carey has the story. You're not begging. This is ours. By law, this belongs to us. That's Alberta Ramming, one of 300 former city market employees still waiting to receive outstanding redundancy and pension payments. City market food store chain here in the capital closed back in April due to financial trouble. Ramming says she and her former colleagues just want what they are legally owed. Well, five people right here in this group would go and put out of their home. Where are they going to go? Next week is our last check from National Insurance, and not only half of what we were getting. If you were getting $2, you're getting dollar, and that's it. Where are they going to go? Social service ain't giving them no more coupon until August. An angry Vansler Turnquest, the spokesman for the group, spearheaded the demonstration in Washington Square. He noted that the matter must be resolved quickly. I'm going after all monies owed and all monies that are used under the pension plan and to sever the pension plan, dissolve it immediately. Uh, 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 move all the directors of the company immediately, Mr. Finlayson, all board of, direct, all board of directors of the, of the pension fund to move them and have the courts move them immediately. Labor Minister Shane Gibson offered Turnquest this advice. That's why I'm suggesting to Turnquest. Mr. Turnquest, they need to file an injunction. They need to take possession of the at least the pension plan. They're waiting now on payments for redundancy payment. That's gonna that you know that's gonna basically work out itself as to whether or not they're paid. But one thing you know for sure is the pension plan has assets. The pension plan may own some stocks. And the longer they wait to deal with this through the courts, the more difficult it'll be to trace these um, assets. Prime Minister Perry Christie noted that efforts are being made to address the matter. I would ask the Attorney General to, to intervene whatever is necessary to be done to help you. It is beyond the show or the politics because your people are suffering. I do understand that. And I am prepared to address it as best like I can. The Prime Minister also advised Turnquest to call and schedule a meeting with him on the outstanding matter. Vern Carey, ZNS News. The executive chairman of the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas announced that ZNS has reached an agreement regarding its Olympic coverage. Chris Saunders has that story. The Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, having secured exclusive rights as the official Olympic broadcaster in the Bahamas today, announced that it is exercising its rights BCB has agreed to sublease certain rights to Cable Bahamas Limited to allow Olympic coverage under specified conditions in a cooperative effort with the private cable facility. Executive Chairman Reverend Dr. William Thompson noted that, quote, while BCB and Cable discussed the possibility of joint negotiations for the rights, no such joint negotiations ever took place. BCB's agreement with CBL to carry Olympic coverage is contingent on CBL not inserting any local advertising on any of its Olympic channels during the period of the Olympiad. While we do not intend to discuss details of the agreement between BCB and CBL publicly, press reports of Cable Bahamas paying BCB a fee in excess of 50% of the cost of the rights are exaggerated. The new agreement is an improvement on the previous one granted CBL by ZNS for rights to the Summer Olympics in China, end quote. The corporation wishes also to assure the public that ZNS will provide expanded coverage on radio and television focusing on Caribbean athletes, inclusive of our premier Bahamian athletes. BCB is committed to bringing premier quality programming to our Bahamian audience. Bahamians can look forward to an average of 21 hours of Olympic coverage daily. Executive Chairman Thompson added, quote, ZNS is committed to carrying as much live coverage as possible 
while other stations, such as NBC, have provided delayed Olympic broadcast coverage in the past, end quote. The public will therefore enjoy full exposure to the summer games, including events that are of particular interest, where regional athletes, inclusive of Bahamians, are performing. Coverage of ZNS TV 13 commences daily from Friday, July 27, 2012 at 4 each morning. The spectacular opening ceremony of the Summer Games will be broadcast live on ZNS TV 13 on Friday at 4 p.m. ZNS senior sports personality Ricardo Lightborn is included in the team providing coverage on the national station. The public is invited to tune in daily to ZNS for live Olympic action with a focus on our athletes. We are committed to Bahamians first. Welcome to tonight's edition of the Business Beats, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Elta Viz Monnings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. Financial Services Minister Ryan Pinder announced in the House of Assembly Wednesday that meaningful progress has been made in trade. He informed parliamentarians that he personally led the negotiating team that participated in the second working group on the Bahamas' accession to the World Trade Organization held in Geneva, Switzerland back in June. Minister Pinder revealed that the Bahamas received favorable feedback from the members participating and the head of the working party for the accession commented that great momentum now exists for the Bahamas' accession process. CIBC First Caribbean will open its newest state-of-the-art branch at the corner of Carmichael and Blue Hill Roads on Thursday, August 2nd. Prime Minister Perry Christie is expected to deliver the keynote address. In international business, Ford Motor Company reported a 57% fall in second quarter profit to $1 billion as it continues to suffer heavy losses at its European unit. It now expects to lose $1 billion in Europe this year, up from a previous forecast of $600 million. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.znsbahamas.com or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And that will end tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. I'm Alta Reeds Mannings. Thanks so much for watching.